fees versus VFSS. Which tool is best to use for my patients? Which instrumental assessment, VFSS or fees, is actually the gold standard? If you're confused about which one is better, then you're in luck. They both really truly are wonderful tools that both have pros and cons. Let's dive into why they are both great. I'm Teresa Richard. I've been a medical speech pathologist for 15 years. I'm a board certified specialist in swallowing and swallowing disorders. I'm the founder and CEO of the MedSLP Collective and MedSLP Education. Spoiler alert. Let's stop saying one or the other is the gold standard and start considering that the platinum standard would be to use both assessments. A few years back, I did a talk with Karen Scheffler at the ASHA convention about why using both tests for a patient would really constitute as the platinum standard. Each test has their own pros and cons, but when used together, we really truly get the entire picture of the patient's swallow. Many studies have been done using both tools, and the reality is that they both show us very different things. VFSS is done laterally from the side using an x-ray. We are able to see the bolus enter the lips and watch it all the way down through the esophagus. This is especially helpful for visualizing the pathophysiology and any impairments of the swallow. FEES is done with an endoscope through the nose, so we have a top-down view of the airway. We are able to see the bolus after it is propelled to the base of the tongue, and we have a great view of the airway and trachea to view aspiration, as well as residue and secretions. As you can see, they both have their advantages, and sometimes, well most times, both tests would be equally beneficial to have access to, to get a full picture for our patients. Now I understand the reality in that some facilities or situations you're not able to get both, and it's tough to even get one sometimes, but if you have access to both, then clinically both may be indicated. Now what if you have to choose one or the other? Here are the major clinical indications for each. For video fluoroscopy, if you have specific concerns for esophageal problems, specific concerns for oral problems, Assess for specific oral, pharyngeal, and esophageal anatomical changes contributing to dysphagia, such as Zanker's diverticulum or a fistula. Major clinical indications to proceed with a fees include to assess secretion management, integrity of the larynx, and surrounding structures. If you need to assess fatigue or textures not viewable on video fluoroscopy, assess for specific laryngeal and pharyngeal anatomic and sensory deficits contributing to dysphagia such as paralysis, presence or absence of sensation, concurrent voice changes or dysphonia, or pre and or post-op head and neck surgery. What I wanna say about choosing an assessment is that I don't want you to feel like this is it. You only get one shot and it's one and done. No, think of a patient who just had a stroke. They may get an MRI, then they may get a CT if more info is needed. It's not frowned upon if one test didn't give us all the answers. Back when I first started working in the SNFs, it was known that Medicare would pay for an updated swallow study every 30 days. I feel like that isn't written anywhere anymore and has mysteriously vanished from the internet, but it's still a constant reminder to me that it's okay to get a follow-up done. In fact, it's encouraged. If your patient has been diligently doing their exercise program, then we want to see that they are ultimately making progress. So ordering a follow-up is certainly encouraged. For those that work in acute care, logistically, it will be much easier and encouraged to order multiple studies as the patient rapidly improves. I'll be posting other videos just like this one that you won't wanna miss, so make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Also, if you have any questions about fees or video fluoroscopy, leave a comment or question below and I'll be sure to respond. Now that we've compared and contrasted the different assessments, I know you're dying for me to tell you which one really truly is best. So here goes. The best assessment you can get for your patient is the one that you can actually get. I've worked in so many different settings and I've heard so many different opinions on which test is best, but the reality for a lot of situations is that the best one you can actually get. If you're really wanting to get a fees but only have access to VFSS, Information from that assessment can give us a heck of a lot more info than no information at all. I've got a free gift for you at metaslpcollective.com forward slash fees VFSS. Check out this editorial reviewed resource on the MetaSLP Collective called Clinical Considerations for VFSS and Fees. I'll stick the link for this in the description below.